Hey everybody, um, so I'm going to show you guys how to do this uh, ramp profile in Houdini to uh, make the profile of geometry here. Um, the reason why I'm showing this is I searched on Odd Force Houdini forums, could not find anything. I even w was involved in a uh, IRC chat group and uh, I, I just couldn't get any help on this. Uh, it, I got things that were really close from a lot of people, um, but nothing that matched exactly. So I'll show you how I did it. Um, it was actually really easy and um, I spent weeks trying to figure it out. And I couldn't figure it out and then one day just magically snapped and happened. Um, so I'll kind of give you the uh, inspiration here. Um, um, but it's going to be a dynamic bridge rope asset. Um, the planks are going to break, the ropes are going to break. Uh, everything will be breakable in the long run. Um, even the support columns here will be fracturable. Um, but that's not what we're looking at here today. What we're looking at is this right here, these support columns. Um, if you notice, I can put a point here. Um, I can also like put another point in right here and say I want another point right here and scale it down and it actually changes the profile. Um, I can also change however many divisions I want. So maybe I want them a little rounder. Maybe I want them to be like a triangle. I don't know. Depends on what the artist is looking for, you know? So uh, the idea is just to give the artist that freedom um, to play. Um, here we can make these uh, cat mall. Um, maybe like kind of smooth them out or something. I don't know. So it just kind of gives you the option to kind of play around a little bit. You know? Um, so that's the idea. I'll show you how I did it. Um, let's start with the new scene. Yeah, we can discard. We didn't do anything. So the idea is we want to start with a line. Oops. First, we want to start with the geometry. Uh, get our geometry node up there. Um, I'm not going to name it because it doesn't really matter right now. It's just a quick tutorial. So uh, we're going to start with a line. Uh, normally, you do want to kind of name these things so that just in case somebody else happens to look at it, you have good naming, good structure. Uh, it's the same thing with like programming. You want to have good code structure, things like that. It's the same thing with Houdini. Um, so anyway, we're going to start off, we can see our points. So we have one blah blah blah. Okay, so um, the idea here is normally you would create a digital asset. I'm not going to do that. Um, but what I am going to do is collapse the geometry node so that I can at least get... Uh, yes, so I can at least... Maybe I will create a digital asset from this biatch. Um, let me just go line profiles, something like that. Who cares? Label line profiles. I'm probably going to delete this OTL anyway because um, I already have it. Uh, but you can just close this crap. Um, what you want is this ramp float value. Let's throw that in there. And you can call this uh, profile ramp. And then we'll go with the uh, profile ramp for the name. Okay, so everything else is cool. Um, we don't really care. We can change this to XYZ. It doesn't really matter a whole lot from what my experience. Um, but that's just kind of what I did. And then you want to hit apply, close it. You can bring up the uh, properties, that way you can see your uh, ramp. You know what I'm going to do also is make the transform and the subnet invisible, so that way it just kind of cleans up my uh, properties a little bit. Throw that over there so that way you can see it. Move this guy over here. So um, go into the geometry node, and then we want to add a point stop. And um, I mean, I was trying to do all sorts of things with like the Vex editor, all that, and it just wasn't really working. Um, turns out all I needed was the points op. It was just sad how easy it was. Um, yeah, it was just kind of embarrassing in the end. 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, what you're looking at is the uh, the Translate X, and I did it in Translate X and Z. Um, really, it doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, so what you want to do is reference your uh, profile, which you can do by going to copy parameter here, and then just pasting the relative here. And I'm going to open this up in the expression editor so it's a little bit easier to see. So um, this is what you want. However, if you notice for the position, which is the value that we want, you see it says profile ramp to POS. Um, that's because we're on uh, point number two. And that's the position of point uh, two. Um, same thing with value. It's uh, profile ramp. So it's the name of the profile, uh, the name of the ramp, and then uh, the number point, and then value. So I was trying all sorts of things to try to extract this information, and it turns out it's retardedly easy. So what you do is you do the name of the, of the ramp, like so. And you notice right here, it shows us, you know, one, two, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's as easy as concatenating the uh, information. So if we want the... Uh, so what we do is we take the ramp profile name and we separate each of these these out right here so we take ramp profile name and then separate and add the point number and then add the rest of this value crap right here so it looks like this <coughs> dollar sign pt gives us our point number and then plus pos and then um, uh, that's it, I believe. So that should give us that. Okay. Um, oops, actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, for x, you want value. My apologies. That's easy to fix. So you go value. Uh, bad parameter reference. What do we have? Okay, so anyway. Um, figured out I totally forgot uh, you have to fit this into a, a fit a one statement son of a bit okay so you fit this into a, a fit a one statement not a fought a one statement there we go so what that's gonna do is it's gonna fit it from zero to one um, in this way you can adjust you have better adjustments so we're gonna go zero to zero point five close that off Okay, so this fit01 statement just gives you extra uh, flexibility so you can adjust your points. Um, what this fit01 statement's really going to do for x is limit the amount it goes over as well. So um, here what we want to do is because the um, points on a ramp start at 1, you, uh, you want to be able to, uh, like this point right here is 1 you want to be able to plus one to the points. So zero now becomes one. And then two becomes, you know, a one becomes two, so on and so forth. So that way, bam, there we go. So if we notice our ramp says, you know, point one is at zero in our value, which is at zero in X. So we're just looking at X right now. Same thing with one. Uh, one is at one, and so we've moved over uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 degrees in X. If we notice that, so one becomes you know 0 0.5. Does that make sense? Uh, to further il illustrate this, we can change this to one, and then it matches appropriately to what we have here. So that's how I uh, I, I did that. Um, so next, what we do is do the same thing, fit a one. Um, in fact, what we're gonna do is do the channel. I've always figured out the channel works so much better. So we find our uh, subnet, and we do profile. Um, you can also copy and paste the uh, relative information, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so what you want to do is do the same thing. So uh, plus dollar PT um, 
in quotes with the uh, plus a one statement, and then you go plus uh, the POS. Okay, and then we want to fit that into a, a fit a one statement again, um, just to give us our extra flexibility. You know, if we want to limit the amount of information, we can do that. So fit a one brackets and then bracket at the end. Um, so again, I'll open that up into the expression editor just to show it in its entirety. So we go fit 01 and we reference our channel, break that up into a concatenated statement, which is uh, the ramp profile plus the uh, point number plus one. Get remember our uh, ramp starts at one and our line starts at zero. And then we do uh, plus the uh, information that we want to track, which is the POS, the position. So for X, we want to track the value and bring it out here. For uh, Y, being up and down the line, we want to track the position in which it is across this ramp right here, going across. So X, we're going up and down in the ramp. Uh, y, we're going across the ramp. Okay. So, and then we fit that into a fit a one statement with a default value or a minimum value of zero with a maximum value of one. Okay, so uh, after we fit that in, it didn't do anything. <laughs> There's a reason for that because we only have two lines and blah, blah, blah. So uh, if we put, fit another line in here, um, it still doesn't do anything. And that's because our line doesn't know how uh, to track how many points there are. That's really easy to fix. We just go over here, copy the parameter, go up to the line and go to the uh, distance. I'm sorry, uh, the number of points and we paste that relative reference in there. So there you go. Now you have two points in that uh, distance. So um, in our position, we see uh, 0 0.5. Um, this is a point where you may not want to fit a one statement. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, actually, I did that wrong. There we go. Uh, so that way, you know, uh, the position is more accurately tracked. Um, if I remember right, I didn't do a fit a one statement last time, so uh, that's that. But you know, once we have our line and our position, go like so, and you can see it's like it's actually tracking this line. Um, the reason why it looks a little off, I've uh, realized, is um, it's actually kind of in reverse in a way. Uh, so again, what I do is I transformed just to make it a little easier for the artist. Um, I just why is this too many sources specified? What? Um, let's go like this. Break that. Fit it in there. And then we'll go one. Turn this on. Huh. It's not quite giving us what we want. Okay, so, uh,. Not sure why it's saying too many sources specified. That was weird. At any rate, so you want to reverse it so that it gives us a more accurate representation of our uh, line here. It seems to not be giving us exactly what we want. And so um, I'm going to go back up to this point here. This is why I put it into a 0.5 because it's a little bit more readable. Um, however, I want this to be the top because I want to be able to like show the artist. This is the top of the ramp. This is the bottom. Um, so this should be the top of my line and so forth. So we go like that and then um, we translate it up. Okay, so what we do is we just do the uh, channel reference of the line dist, which is the distance. And uh, we do that divided by two. And what that gives us is zeros at the top one and then two and it gives us a better representation of our profile um, so yeah so um, next what you want to do is we want to um, revolve our line bam you can kind of see what that gives us we'll flat like that 
Um, so then, you know, I, I added uh, on my divisions. Okay, so a really uh, easy way to um, adjust your uh, parameters here. Um, let me delete this one so I can show you the process. So say I want the number of divisions right here to, uh, to be in my um, digital asset. Well, instead of creating a flow and doing it that way, it gets kind of messy. Uh, you can just click on the channel that you want and um, export parameter to uh, uh, type parameters. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, my mistake, different way. Um, you go to your type parameters of your digital asset. And then in here, you just take your parameter and just drag it in. It's a lot easier. Um, and then you can change it, whatever you want. Um, just gonna limit this divisions and then you definitely want to lock it uh, two is just a flat plane and so it's not very interesting so I limit it to three and then you can change this to whatever you want no big deal um, I'll just leave it at that um, so now you have a parameter over here that has the number of divisions and then as you can see you can change your profile dramatically And do this cool rocket ship thing or whatever you know it depends on what you're trying to create but you have a profile now uh, I'll turn the points off so now you have a profile and you can make that however many divisions you want being four or whatever now if you notice it's kind of uh, in, in like the four it's uh, it's just going in X you know so the square seems a little off um, what you can do is you can just take the X value in the point stop and attach it to the Y value and that kind of makes it a little more square um, that's just kind of what I did uh, can maybe even limit this to 2.5 um, limit this to 2.5 just to give us a little bit more of what we got here um, so yeah, I mean, that's essentially what you get. Um, now, if you change the uh, value, it, it looks like it fits a little bit more according to the X, Y, uh, or X, Z, uh, X, Z values. So um, that's how I did it. Uh, that's how I got my profiles for my bridge. Um, you know, uh, let me know what you think. And I hope to be posting uh, a lot more uh, little tutorials and videos and stuff like that in the near future. Uh, see you guys later.